Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Andromeda S. Sherrill, S. standing for Sloan. Welcome to the Institute of Therapeutic Research. I'm sure it's been very warm and cozy here so far. Brilliant. Now, I am the head of many of these studies here at the Institute, including this one. Now, if you could just confirm for me your name. Mm -hmm. And your date of birth. Mm -hmm. And the Institute should have given you a packet of papers. And these packet of papers should have in the upper right hand corner a number. What is that number? Starts with a zero, dear. There we are. All right, this number is going to be throughout your time here, your ID number. This number, right, quite familiar with it. So we may call you by this number if we do not use your given name. For example, if I were to ask you a question and then say 0962, Five, six, then that would refer to you. Ah, Crystal. Now, you are one of the many individuals that have been selected to participate in this study. And have you been made aware of this study and what it entails? Well, you see, we're a very professional environment here. And we are doing some of the most cutting-edge research. Now, this particular experiment we are calling the... No, oh dear, is that what we're calling it? <coughs> Well, it seems that we are calling this the raddest ASMR done solely by making role plays experiment, also known as the old Rasmer Dasmer. Now, in this particular study, we are measuring the reported experiences of participants that are exposed to certain stimuli also known in the Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, or ASMR community, known as triggers. And this is going to be occurring in a category known as role plays. Do you have any questions so far? So what this is going to basically entail is we are going to be putting you in certain situations that involve common ASMR themes, such as perhaps a doctor's office or perhaps a haircutting scenario, things of that nature, right? And we are just going to be performing said role plays as they normally occur in the ASMR environment. And then we're going to be measuring your experience and how you feel about said environment. All right. So the reason I am here currently is before this study begins, I'd just like to start as well as end with a survey. Now this survey we are giving all of our participants. It is the exact same questions exact same scenario, exact same situation. And in these questions, I will be asking 
your opinion of certain ASMR triggers, as well as a number of other just basic questions. Right, nothing too hard. Thank God for me. All right. So, if you're all ready to begin, I would be absolutely thrilled to start this. That's all right. Wonderful. Now, first question. Have you ever heard of autonomous sensory meridian response, also known as ASMR? And have you ever experienced ASMR? When is the earliest known age you remember experiencing ASMR? Right, I suppose you could even give a ballpark. Mm hmm. Wonderful. How often on a day to day basis do you experience ASMR? For example, not often at all, uh, perhaps monthly, weekly, several times a week, daily. Mm. Mm. And have you ever watched an ASMR video? Generally, these videos are uploaded to the music streaming or video logging site known as YouTube. And how often would you say you watch ASMR videos? All right, well, let me give you some prompts here. So, how often do you watch them? First being, not at all, once in a while, somewhat frequently, frequently, or all the time. Wonderful. And now I'm going to give you a list of stimuli known as triggers, and what I want you to do is tell me if you experience ASMR from said trigger, if you do not experience ASMR from said trigger, or if you do not know if you experience ASMR from said trigger. I'm going to read off this list, and you can just tell me yes, no, or I don't know. Whispering, tapping, scratching, blowing, soft speaking or soft voices, page turning, visual triggers, Face touching, personal attention, one moment please. Thank you. Scissor sounds. Crinkling, brushing, certain words, these are also known as trigger words, typing, massage, finger fluttering, sort of a uh, 
motion such as this doesn't usually occur in a real life situation. Mm. Tongue clicking. Mm. Yeah, that one is hotly debated as to whether it is a good trigger or not. Some with misophonia really do not enjoy it, while well, others do. Capping and uncapping, such as on a cork, mm, cork in a bottle. Mm. Water sounds, such as running water, or maybe the sound of water being poured, perhaps even rain. Right. Folding could be the sight of it, or perhaps the sound. Mouth sounds. Latex gloves. The sound of them being put on, or perhaps even the visual stimuli of seeing them. Writing, such as pen or pencil writing. Chalk writing, a bit of a different sound. Finger rustling, that would be something, again, not necessarily in a real life situation, say for maybe when you're calling a cat, or even sometimes a small child, I suppose. Concentration, particularly on a specific task, like watching someone do something that is demanding as far as concentration goes. Mm. And what about the sounds SK, 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 such as mask or ask? Sk, sk, sk. Mm. And spraying, such as the sound of spraying water, or perhaps perfume. Mm. Sticky fingers, such as perhaps on tape, or any other sort of sticking skin sounds. White noise. Mm. Humming. tuning fork. Yeah, it's not something generally here, say, for at the doctor's office. Fizzing. Soap or lather sounds, such as the sounds that your hands would make when you're lathering your hands or like washing your hair or something. Match lighting. All right, the sound of lotion on hands or skin. And what about the opening and closing of jars? Could be like with the swivel top, could be just opening the jar. You slightly turn it, open it. All right. Now, I believe for our triggers, that is just about it. Again, as I said before, we will be doing the survey afterwards as well, as you may encounter many of these triggers and the ones that you weren't necessarily sure of if you experience it or not. Then we can come back to it and see if perhaps you do. Now, what I'd like to do, set this down real quick is moving forward we're going to begin with a physical examination to determine your overall health it doesn't matter whether you are physically healthy or unhealthy or anything in between it's more just for a baseline if you will 
and then I believe once we've gotten your physical examination cleared, then we can begin the whole Rasmer Dasmer experiment. Now, do you have any questions or concerns before we adjourn this meeting? Well, we should be contacting you here real soon to set up that appointment. I do not know for sure when we're going to be setting that up, but I'd say within the next couple weeks, hopefully. Hopefully as funding keeps us going, we should be moving. Right. Now the Institute may send you home with another packet of papers, just some basic information on what's going to be going on, some information about the study itself. We're not necessarily making this up as we go along, but there are new bits of information that we may divulge from time to time, but you will be notified. Wonderful. I may see you again from time to time to check on you, but as the head of said experiment, I'm not always playing in the sandbox with all the other kids. It was lovely to meet you, and I hope to see you here soon. Let's see. 096256. Thanks for coming in. I'm sure you remember the way out. If not, we've got a ridiculous amount of signs, and you can pick up a map on the bookshelf over there if you need to. It's a big building. Don't get lost. All right. Well then, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye now.